Thanks for tuning in to WLUW. My name is DJ Sing Slow. You are listening to interviews from Iceland Airwaves. We're here with Milky Whale, and uh, I wanted to start the interview by uh, reading everyone your bio mm-hmm. for who doesn't know you, because I thought that was really striking when I first uh, researched you guys. So your bio says, a bowl of Skittles with eight double shots of espresso, topped with a mania of receiving both a new puppy and a trampoline on Christmas morning. So explain to me how that reflects your music. Well, actually, it's not from us, this quote, but I mean, it's a quote from like one of our first concerts in Iceland Airwaves. And uh, we had some fra- like people from the Reggae Grapevine magazine, and they came to our show, and they liked it so much that they, they decided to follow us to every concert, like that wow. Airwaves festival. So yeah. we had like a fan base, and we were so lucky that the fan base was actually a, a local newspaper. Yeah, yeah. and they, we played, I think, maybe around five, like five or six shows. Yes. And then so a good we number of shows. Yeah, yes. and then we ended up playing in their uh, in their office yeah. at the right. end of end of the day. Just ran over there, played one show in, in their office. And then they all took a taxi, like like the whole staff took a taxi from the office to our last off when you show. Yeah. <laughs> so they were like saw us once and they were like coming, and then yeah, they they wrote this about us, and I I mean we liked it so much, and I mean I thought it really kind of captures also a bit the. Um, the atmosphere in our concerts. Totally. Because for me, it's really this. A hundred percent. And I mean, when I was watching some of the videos, I was like, this is totally fitting, you know? And how many festivals in a row have you done of the airwaves? Third. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, third. <clears throat> and we were like super new when uh, Airwaves yeah. first ever started. It was like our first concert kind of. Yeah. Like even like the first concert we had, this like we we hadn't really formed the band in a like a proper way. So I was in front of house doing what I do on stage now. I was with the guy like the sound guy right next to him. So we played this funny show where Melkoka was on stage and I was in front of house. And then we, we like communicated like a little bit like this. Uh-huh. So the audience was like turning around. <laughs> when I had something to say. <laughs> and then yeah. again, so they were very cool. confused. Yeah, yeah, they were very confused. So how did you two link up together? Um, I'm actually a, a dancer and a choreographer, uh, working in Iceland and abroad. And then I, I've been also like doing some music on my own and with other people. But I kind of been super interested in like how to bring the music to the theater. Um, so I and I had been like a fan of Arthur's band for such a long time. I think Belfast, the other one, and uh, so I just I just sent him an email, kind of just introduced yeah. myself and. Uh, and we had already worked on one uh, theater uh, play together. Yeah. So that was easy. And then I was like Arthur's doing music and I was choreographing, and then we just I I kind of tricked him and said like we are gonna make a dance performance and then in the first. Uh, Rehearsal, I said, no, we're not going to make a dance performance, we're going to do pop music. Yeah. <laughs> like, was... super pop. So I thought I was going to be moving away from what I was doing into doing like a perfor- performance-based music. But, right, where it focused on really the... on your craft. Yeah, I thought I thought I was going to be focusing on Melkoff's craft, <laughs> but, but she uh, wanted to focus on making pop music, which is what... I usually do. <laughs> so, right. That was interesting. So, are you working with other people now, or are you two pretty much exclusively working together, or are you like producing oh, for other people? In Iceland, there is no such thing as working exclusively Excuse with me. one band. No. Everyone is in, like, you know, at least two bands. Yeah. Right. So, uh, my uh, other band, which I've been a part of for 11 years. Yeah. That's uh, a healthy amount of time. Actually, I think it's. Getting closer to 12. Yeah, all right. And uh, uh, it's called FM Belfast. We're playing tomorrow at uh, the Art Museum. Come check it out. We'll be there. Are you playing in Reykjavik? Yeah. 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 I'll be here for one more day. Ah, okay. By, by force, not choice. All right. <laughs> by so. force, someone's keeping you. <laughs> well, no, not someone's keeping me, but we have an itinerary and we have to follow the itinerary. Uh, so. Yeah, so I'm a part of FM Belfast as well, and I'm also a part of uh, Prince Polo, which is another Icelandic club. 
very cool, very cool. I mean, we are the youngest kind of project, yeah. your project, yeah. we, are the, we are the newest. But it, it's quite nice because when we started at Airwaves, it went like up pretty fast and we were invited to play at Roskilde Festival, like, yeah. And that was like yeah. starting at Airwaves and then the next gig was like Roskilde, so it was quite big for us. But I mean, in a way, like we are very experienced performers. I mean, Arden has been on stage like, for ten years with his band, and I have been on stage for ten years doing dance. Right. So, right. Even though we are new together. Yeah, that's very cool. So, tell me how you write your lyrics. I I read and saw that your mom helps you write your lyrics. That's yeah. so unique. No, really. Like, I I don't know of any <laughs> artist that is like, mom, like, can you write my lyrics or help me write my lyrics? You know, because it's. Lyric writing, lyricism is very personal, you yes. know? And it's also, I mean, because my mom is a writer, and, and when she was an trained writer in Iceland and, and abroad, so, I mean, maybe it was a little bit different for me to ask my mother to, to write lyrics, but, uh, I mean, first first of all, she found it like, super hard to write in English. She was like, can't we do it in Icelandic? And I would just get a translator to translate all the lyrics. I was like, no, it's not really how it works, and we need to get it in English. And... Uh, and then we talked about it a lot, and we we kind of like um, formed a, like a bit of a world, like and what could kind of function within this world, because we were still in that moment making a, a performance for a theater show, even though it was a concert, uh, and that came the concept of Milky Way, which is kind of like this lonely whale that that is alone on stage and in the ocean, and it's kind of looking for friends and people and love, you know, and uh, and then she wrote these lyrics and then we formed it together with Artne. Uh, and it's actually quite funny because like after we uh, premiered Milky Way, I just read an article in the New York Times that scientists uh, discovered a whale uh, that sings in a different frequency than other whales and, uh, and nobody can hear. Uh -huh. So he's like alone swimming in the ocean. So it was really like yeah. Milky Way kind of exists, really. So we like to kind of dedicate some songs yeah. to the story. I actually yeah. really enjoyed working uh, like this with your mother, uh, like delivering a package of lyrics. Yes. And then, like, because then you're a little bit... Um, distance. Yeah, you're, there's like distance between you and the lyrics, so they're not coming from you. Right. So you're not like shy about seeing them or saying these things because <coughs> they're not from you so it's like a little bit of freedom like right. doing it like that and it's also you have like no pre um, pre-decided idea about how you're gonna sing it or how you're gonna like how you want it to to how you want to say it yeah. so you kind of it's like you get a poems you get like 10 15 20 poems and then out of starts with beat and then I was kind of like putting all the lyrics out and then I was like oh, okay maybe this one yeah. and then uh, bringing it and then figuring out so it was it's it's a different process yeah. it is it's a unique process yeah. Yeah. for sure because if, if the lyrics are not ready before you start the song I find that oftentimes it will take a long time to finalize the song because it kind of like it moves from one thing to another but in this in this way, it's very focused. Like mm -hmm. the lyrics are like they they flow in a certain way, and they don't change in like the in the meantime. Like we don't add words, but we might actually like repeat things or yeah. cut something away a little bit or or you know. Right. Yeah. So you take you take what you write with your mom, and then you gear it towards your beats. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. The, I'm the medium. I like, yeah, yeah. go to my mom, exactly. and then exactly. read out there, and then I go back, so yeah. So how do you write with your mom? Do you guys, like, sit down together, you guys have coffee, or is it totally your mom writing? She writes it, um, but... Uh, and on her own, like, on you're not own. with her. No, but uh, she doesn't really, I think writers are really, like, they don't want to be with anybody when they no. write their stuff, and she's really like this, so she likes to kind of close off and I mean but like I said I mean we talk about it we kind of decided on a world and then uh, and then I just let her go a bit free mm -hmm. so it's uh, yeah it's quite nice awesome so I wanted to ask you guys something more specific um, about your home country Iceland so what do you guys find uh, most inspiring about the country that you live in and how does that influence your music or your mother's writing, let's say, for example, so you can answer for the beat part of it as well. This is such a difficult question. 
I don't know what's so inspiring in the last things. Mm, inspiring. Actually, the most inspiring thing is how boring it is to live here. <laughs> because that means that uh, like you can only go to the movies so often. Like that gets old, so you have to do something else. And there aren't many things you can do in the like the dead of winter. And there's like it's dark, mm -hmm. so we tend to be good at things that happen indoors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, there's heat indoors, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and we have to find ways to like entertain each other and entertain yourself. And I think like making music is that like making music in Iceland is not a professional thing to do like you don't really go into it oh I want to be a musician and that's going to be my livelihood yeah. like no one like you might do that for like classical music or something like that even there it's very hard but in pop music it's like it's almost impossible like only a few get the chance to actually live off it mm -hmm. and uh, so that, that's, I think, the reason why everyone is in like many bands because you're just trying to have fun, like do something interesting. It's not like a thing where, you know, like oh, I'm only in this band and we're focusing on our career. It's it's a, uh, you know, you try to do it for fun. Mm -hmm. Right, totally. I think like I don't know. I, for me, it's maybe I'm gonna say it's horrible, now, but like for me, it's even like so boring that I kind of ran away. I yeah. needed to just go abroad because there was like. Nothing, and I, I, I felt it when I was because I moved to Amsterdam when I was 17, and I felt that was so much more inspiring than to be here because all of a sudden I could just go everywhere, and in the weekends and I could go and see concerts and performances yeah. and go to festivals. So that was kind of like a an explosion of ideas for me. We can't go to another city. There is just one city. There's just one city. <laughs> yeah, there's just Reykjavik. Yeah, but two thirds of the population. Yeah. Yes. But I must say still that today I love to come back because it's oh. so, I mean, it's just calm and quiet and, and inspiring and great people. I mean, as a foreigner, it's, it's an amazing place. And I think when you grow up somewhere, you just take everything, you know, like, this is how it is, you know, right. like, I'm so used to this. But when you come in as a, as a foreigner, you're like, whoa, you know, like, this is mm -hmm. so peaceful. The yeah. air is so clean, you yeah. know, like. Coming from Chicago, look, this air is like so refreshing yeah. and it's so beautiful, you know? And I think that's definitely the lack of things to do or, you know, the weather definitely inspires a, a type of feeling for sure. Whether it's, yeah, yeah. in your case, I feel like wanting something to do, like, you know, instead of sitting at home and, you know, having it being dark the whole entire day, you're like, mm -hmm. no, like, let's let's go out and have fun, yeah, you know? Yeah. Like, I think that's what your music really yeah, yeah. is about, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I also think, like, I mean, we as a band, we are, we are never trying to be super cool or anything. Mm. We are, like, <laughs> it doesn't really fit us. We just, we are just a bit silly. And that I kind of also like that there's no... Uh, pressure to be cool or like to fit into a certain image or I find right. it very boring like to the idea cool. of every everyone being cool yeah, it's, yeah. it's like a yeah I also it find kind it of boring. inhibits a lot of good things yeah well you're trying to like if you're trying to be cool you're really trying to gear yourself in one direction yeah, yeah. and then you're not opening up to other things that could happen naturally yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. I mean, even though I find maybe now at this concert I was a little bit more silly than I am normally. We have to talk about it. I was really like falling, kind of almost you, off stage. You were. I didn't see it. And I was like, like small getting tangled. There on the side. <laughs> I was getting tangled in the microphone, <laughs> <laughs> and then I was doing like uh, see, you know. Oh, so okay. You really missed that. I had really a lot of moments there, but. Um, I will try to be a bit. I was just in my office and answering <laughs> emails. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you do in Amsterdam? Uh, I was studying choreography and performance making. It was quite nice because it was not really a, a choreography, like a traditional choreography school. It's actually one of the most innovative kind of choreography schools in Europe. It's kind of just like... Uh, people from everywhere, very talented, not even coming from dance, but people from like uh, theater and uh, from India, Indian Bollywood dancer, I had a Swedish flamingo dancer, I had like uh, like so many people that are today my best friends. So I, yeah, I was in Amsterdam and then I moved to Brussels and I studied hardcore dance 
and then I also lived around in Europe and then I came home. Very nice. Yeah, Amsterdam is a, it's a town of foreigners for it sure. Is. For sure. It's a bit like a bus stop. You yeah. like everybody's just coming and going constantly. It's it's a really cool place though. They have a lot of culture there. Yeah, they a do. A lot of culture. So um, I have a couple more questions for you all. Um, so when you guys have nothing to do at home, um, what do you guys like to do? What What are you doing when you're like, wow, I have literally nothing to do? I really love to go to cafes. I would just like I would live in a cafe. You know, and just go there with my computer and have a coffee and just like sit there and, and work a little bit, but also kind of listen to conversations with people who are sitting next to me. Yeah. It's really like, uh, I can't, I, I can't really be like alone in the, in the silence working. It's like not really my style. Also when I have nothing to do, I like to do it. So what's your drink of choice at a cafe? It's a uh, oat milk cappuccino. That's kind of my go-to drink at the moment. Very nice. I, I'm like, uh, I have interest in many, many things. I, I like to program. I like to like uh, fix electronics and build electronics. And it's all like the most nerdy stuff you can think of. That's what I like to do when I have nothing else to do. There's nothing wrong with that. So what are you uh, building? Well, actually, now I'm learning to fix motherboards. Like on laptops just uh, just like as a side thing but I've been building stuff with like Arduino and stuff like that you know that? no I don't so I built like MIDI controllers and oh, yeah. stuff like that yeah uh, so for my other band I built like the main like the heart in the band that's cool so you see like that. that's very very awesome yep so what are you guys planning on doing um, in the future what's what's the future for you all are you going to come out with a new record and you're going to come to the states anytime soon what what's I'm on actually the docket? going to the states on monday but on monday. Not, not to play <laughs> what are you going for uh, just to visit my sister she lives in seattle oh very nice i, very I, nice. I want to go on a road trip in the states that would be so yeah. nice <laughs> you can get an RV. Yes. <laughs> to get like an old school retro RV and kind of drive around. And I really like, I would love to go like through the Bible Belt and listen to some country. It's <laughs> <laughs> kind of a guilty pleasure. <laughs> country is your guilty pleasure? Yeah, I love it. Like old school country, like the Lutheranish country. I love it. It's so nice. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, a lot of things. Just we are gonna, we are actually gonna do a new piece together next year. And that's like more of a theater kind of, or like it's again bringing the concert form back to stage. So we're working, and it's a group piece. So I, I'm getting, I'm working with like both musicians and uh, dancers. And it's like really nice. It's really like two great musicians who are also performing at airwaves and are both fronting their own bands. Uh, and it's like a really nice combination of characters and I'm very curious. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.